So we've spent some time setting and updating passwords for the default and newly created account Linux CBT. Now what we want to do is turn our attention to some useful commands that can help you to return useful information about your server. This category of commands are referred to as show commands. Show commands show information similar to the way routers from Cisco systems show useful information about connection, status information, and the like. So there are many show commands, many categories of show commands. We'll begin with some basic show commands, but first let's document the area that we're discussing. So this area is simply labeled explore useful show commands. As a DBA, you will want to know some of the key show commands that can help you to determine what your server supports, what sort of tables and indexes are supported, who's connected, the status of connections, the process list, how many processes are running in the event you want to kill connections. Let's say you have some runaway queries or queries that are taking over the resources of your system. You may want to learn more information about your tables, your databases, your columns. Perhaps you want to see the syntax that was used to create your database or your tables or your columns. And show commands will return that information to you in a useful fashion. And of course, everything we run here can be run directly from the shell and exported as a result using output redirection to a text file so that it can be imported to a remote system. Or you could even pipe it into a client which will then pipe it inbound to a remote instance. But more on that later on. So as it stands, a select user reveals who we're currently connected as root at localhost, which means we have full privileges. Let's begin with a basic show command that we've used called show grants. Show grants is an important and useful show command because it returns the privileges that the currently used or currently logged in user is able to use within the DB or within the DBMS, which applies to all DBs managed by the DBMS. Show grants by default returns privilege information for the currently logged in user, root at localhost. It indicates who the user is, both the username part, the host part, as well as the password who this user is identified as, and any other permissions such as whether or not the user has the grant option, which means the user can grant privileges to new and existing users. However, show grants can also show information or privilege related information for other users defined on a system, such as the user like CBT, who we recently defined. Simply run show grants for and in this case the user Linux CBT which will return the grant information or privilege information for that user. As you can see the user is considered to be a non-privileged user because the user is only granted usage on star.star which means the user is simply allowed to connect to the DBMS and do nothing else. We can confirm as such but we have so no need to revisit. So here are the privileges that are granted to the user Linux CBT identified by a certain password regardless of host. Only key information here includes the, the username Linux CBT as well as the password. Host is relevant in this case because there's a wildcard in operation. And just in case you didn't know, MySQL currently does not support wildcards in the username field. And again, that field comes from, we'll get user host password from mysql.seq, user that is, mysql or mysql.user. Let's select that, we didn't specify from. So the user field is stored in the mysql.user table, the host field and the password field is ditto. Super, so show grants is useful. Let's focus on some show commands that are related to the database itself and then the table which is one level beneath and then columns which is yet another level beneath in the hierarchy. If we execute a show databases as you know it lists the databases that are currently configured on the system that the currently logged in user has permissions to see. Since we are a super user on this system, we should, should be able to see all the databases that are configured. Here they are. Show databases dumps all of the databases. But an even more useful command is the show create database, which shows the command that was used to create the database. 
Let's say you're interested in creating a new database which is similar to any of the databases defined. Now, the database creation command in SQL is very simple, and it isn't specific by any means to MySQL. It's just a SQL standard statement which applies primarily across the board. Let's execute show create database for a given database, let's say MySQL, and what will be returned is the command that was used to create the database MySQL. So if in the event that you're curious about how the database was created or the syntax that was used, here it is. MySQL, the database which was revealed using show database, was created using create database MySQL, which tells you that if you want to create a new database, let's create one called tempdb, which is commonly found within the Windows SQL world. If we want to create a database, we could simply go ahead and execute create database, which is case insensitive, but it helps for clarity or for readability to use uppercase when using keywords, followed by the name of the database. In this case, we'll call it tempdb, followed by a semicolon. As simple as that, we now have a new database entry in the database table, the dbs table. If we re-execute show databases, we'll now see a new database called tempdb, and if we re-execute show create database, but this time for tempdb, it'll reveal that the tempdb database was created using create database tempdb. Backticks are used to indicate that this is the exact name of the database, tempdb. And its default character set is Latin 1. Speaking of character sets, we can reveal the character sets supported by the server by using a show command. Simply execute show character set and followed by a semicolon and a list of character sets supported by this instance of MySQL is returned. As you can see, the default MySQL version 5 installed in our SUSE 10 Linux supports a pretty wide range of character sets across the board, seemingly covering most of the nations or most of the major nations throughout the world, Chinese, European, Latin, ASCII, Japanese, Cyrillic, and so on. So even Unicode is supported, which means many more character sets can be supported that use Unicode. So show character set reveals the character set information, and additional character sets can be added to MySQL. So show character set is yet another useful command. We should list the commands that we've used so far. Show data, show grants that is, so show grants which has optional arguments such as for and a given username. We've looked at show databases which returns the list of databases to the screen. There's also show create database and in this case we specified or in two cases we specified two different databases MySQL as well as show create database temp DB after we created the database and there's also show character set which returns the list of character sets supported but there's still more show commands that are pretty useful for us and let's drill down beneath the database level to the table level now we know that the MySQL database contains many tables let's do a use MySQL followed by show tables show tables is yet another show command show tables returns a list of tables no differently than show databases returns a list of databases however what if we wanted to get more information about the tables themselves besides a description as you know if you use the describe command which is in essence a show type command because it returns information related to the structure of the table we describe for example columns underscore priv and it returns the structure of the database and the, the definition of each of the fields, each of the columns, host, DB, and so on. These are the types of data that can be used in the various fields, character 60, 64, 16, you name it. However, if we execute a show create table user, you'll see that the actual SQL syntax that was used to create the table 
in this case user within the MySQL database is returned to the screen. You can ignore all of the comments prior or plus everything between the plus symbols and just focus primarily on the create table statement. If you wanted to mimic the, the user table, simply copy the text that you see here and you could go ahead make modifications and you'd have a table that's simply similar to the user table. Perhaps you'd give it a different name and perhaps you'd execute the create table statement within a different DB altogether. But nonetheless, a show create table and the table name will return the exact SQL commands that were used to create the table. So we'll put that in as show create table and in this case we use the table user but this could be applied to any table. Let's go with DB for example which is yet another table and this is the syntax that was used to create the DB table. And As we've mentioned many of the grant tables carry or resemble one another in terms of field names. So there's a lot of commonalities across those grant tables. So that's a show create table for a given table. What about showing the columns from certain tables? Since we're focusing on the user table, let's execute a show columns or we could use the keyword fields which is another way of specifying columns or just an interchangeable word. So show columns in this case we want to show columns from user. Show columns from user works similarly to the describe table feature. Show columns returns all the columns, the type in the event that you want to mimic this particular structure within a different database and so on. So this is an easy way for you to return the information that's relevant to a given column by executing a show columns from a given table. As we mentioned, show fields is also interchangeable. So show fields for the word columns. It provides or returns the same output, same number of fields, same number of everything. It's just an interchangeable term. Super. Now there are many other show commands. Next we continue looking at the other key show commands. We focused thus far on show commands that show privilege information, database information, how the database was created, as well as how a given table was defined and the character set that's supported. And we've also discussed the show columns slash field. So we'll include between brackets columns pipe field so that you can use these interchangeably. And of course this is all documented in the MySQL documentation from and we'll simply say table. But in our case our table was the MySQL.user table. So now we want to focus on other show commands that relate to the current operation of MySQL. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's continue exploring some useful show commands that any DBA of MySQL is responsible for knowing. So we focused on DBs, tables, columns, just some brief commands that will return information. Probably the more important commands include the ones that create commands which return how a given database or table was created. They're very useful because you can use them to recreate tables as well as databases. Databases are very easy to create. Simply use the create database statement followed by the name of the database and providing the database name is unique, the database will be created for you. It's simply a container. But tables are more complex to create because you'll need to determine what type of data will be stored in the table, how it relates, if it relates to any other tables, and so on. Let's turn our attention to some show commands that again focus on the current operation of the MySQL DBMS. The first command that comes to mind is show engines. So let's just label this section MySQL operational show commands. We want to look at show engines. Show engines is important because MySQL as a DBMS is able to talk to different types of tables using various st storage engines. It's able to actually communicate simultaneously with different storage engine types, but there certainly is a default, the MyISAM, which we'll show you momentarily. In order to reveal the engines that are supported by the current build, simply execute show engines. Show engines returns the engines that are supported. The default engine as of 
what is considered to be the stable but pretty old version of MySQL, but you'll find it out in the wild, 3.23, the default engine is MyISAM for MyISAM type tables. It provides great performance, yada, yada, yada. This is the default table type. So when you create a new database like we have, so let's show databases, tempdb in this case, and you move on to create additional tables, which we'll be doing, of course, the default type of storage engine that will be used for the tables that are stored within the tempdb will be of type myisam and these particular files will reside on the file system in the varlib mysql directory but all that information can be revealed of course using show commands additionally mysql supports other types of storage engines such as in memory ndb cluster which allows us as administrators or DBAs to store various table structures in memory and replicate them across multiple hosts consequently creating a clustered environment there's also the popular InnoDB Berkeley DB support isn't compiled but can be in the event that you want MySQL to work with Berkeley DBs you may want to use a common DB such as Berkeley DB so that other programs let's say such as SendMail or Postfix can interact with those DBs but more and more MySQL is providing interfaces or APIs to programs so that it can communicate directly with MySQL and rely upon MySQL to use its default storage engine but that doesn't prevent MySQL from using other popular database technologies such as Berkeley DB here's an interesting engine type let's say you wanted to create a DB with table structures but you don't actually want to store the information so perhaps you just want to test there's actually a black hole engine which makes use of dev null which is a pretty neat facility on any Linux or Unix type system so basically anything sent to the black hole engine ends up in dev null which happens to be a device on your system by the way but it means it just disappears it isn't committed to disk it is not saved and here's some other storage engines of interest for you folks who work with spreadsheets heavily maybe the CSV type or you could even use this particular format with access that's Microsoft's access and there are other types but the default storage engine is myisam now we did mention that these files are represented on the file system if you execute help within the MySQL terminal monitor, you'll see that you can execute system related commands either using the keyword system or the escape sequence backslash and the shebang or exclamation mark. Let's go with backslash shebang followed by lsl varlib mysql. let's go back and just include a space there we missed the space right after the shebang what this lists is the default location on the file system for MySQL especially within Linux environments but it also applies to Unix when you install MySQL it sets up its databases which includes tables and columns beneath var lib MySQL each database is granted a different directory space so for example the default MySQL database has its own directory and you know it's a directory because the very first column specifies a D instead of a dash indicating that it's a directory MySQL has its own directory but you'll need to be either MySQL or root to enter it and beneath that directory are all of the tables and indexes related to all of the tables under management by the name of the database so the name of the database is really represented by a directory container and it's all logical because within the Linux file system space a database container is really just a directory and when it, within a directory you have all sorts of files and subdirectories similarly for the database that we created tempdb there's a newly created directory notice that the privileges include MySQL for most of these errors here with the exception of one of the files the error file which is owned by MySQL but root is also allowed to interact with it to read write to it MySQL needs privileges to the varlib MySQL location for writing and reading to and from the different DB files, tables, indexes, and so on. In a separate shell, let's SU in because we need elevated privileges, and we'll navigate once SU'd in to varlib MySQL. Beneath MySQL again are the directories that pertain to the databases under management by this DBMS. 
Let's navigate into MySQL since tempdb doesn't have any defined tables and you'll see that there are entries for all of the different tables. Let's LSL for example and since we've been working with the user table quite heavily only user star. Here are all of the items that pertain to the user directory and if or to the user table that is beneath the MySQL directory. If we then execute a file against user star you'll see that as best as possible the file program attempts to return the type of file as it knows. What's important is that the form files are table definition files so these are table definition files they define the table and the definition of a table includes its structure for example when we're inside of MySQL and we execute describe MySQL.user, for example, it returns a structure. This is the definition or the schema of the table itself. The schema for any table means all of the columns and the column definitions and any other rules such as whether or not nulls are permitted, which fields function as private keys or as primary keys that is, or any foreign keys, if any default values, and anything extra. This information is stored again in the form or FRM file, the table definition file. Then we have beneath the MYI file. The MYI file, we'll ignore the MYD for now. The MYI file is the actual ISAM or database file that's supported when we executed the show engines. Let's rerun that show engines again, which is in our history. There it is. My ISAM is the default engine, and files that are stored, especially table files, that are stored with the .myi extension are the actual ISAM compressed table files. This is where the table data is stored. So any of the users that are defined, if we select user, comma, host, comma, password from mysql.user, and we're not in the shell here, so we'll just copy and paste this. When we select this information from the mysql.user, table it really is being queried from the user.myi file. Let's run this and of course after a semicolon we get the users and we didn't specify the from. Let's go ahead and put that elusive from in. These users reside actually on the file system in a file called user.myi. More about user.myd later on. Super. So show engines tells us the types of engines that are supported by the default build and there are many engines all of which are not compiled in. What else is important to our success as MySQL DBAs besides show engines? There's also a show process list. Let's take a look at show process list. Show process list and we'll copy this into our notes file because it's important. There are many other show commands by the way but these are the important ones especially when you're just learning MySQL. Show process list will return any connections. This is a great way of knowing the various connections and it's a great way for you to extract the ID for the sake of killing connections or killing long-standing queries that are hogging resources on the system. For each connected user what's returned is a connection ID, the username, the host where they're connected from, the DB that they're using, and you know that this is set this session because we executed a use MySQL, the command that they ran a query, we ran a query to return the process list, the amount of time that the query or whatever the command is took, in this, que in this case the query wasn't measurable or it was immeasurable, and, at least based on the metrics being used, the state of the connection and any additional information. Well, we ran a show process list. Connection 20 is another connection. The kill command is specifically designed for us to kill connections that we think is making the performance of our MySQL DBMS degrade. In this case, it isn't the case, but it provides a great example for us to be able to illustrate killing connections. We've initiated a connection from the system from a remote shell. In fact, from the separate or separate window here, let's execute W, and you'll see that there's a connection from a remote host. That remote host who has an SSH connection is logged in. This particular host is logged in to MySQL, occupying connection number 20. So if you want to kill connection number 20, simply specify kill followed by, and we'll, it's a keyword, so let's 
to put it in uppercase, but it is case insensitive, followed by the connection ID or thread ID. For each user who connects to MySQL to perform queries, the user is granted a separate thread. A thread is a process responsible for executing queries for the user within the MySQL context. So if you have 100 users connected, you have 100, 100 threads. In other words, MySQL is multi-threaded. 1,000 users connect, 1,000 threads are launched. And as the users disconnect, the threads are abandoned. Let's kill thread ID 20. And then let's rerun show process list and notice that connection 20 has died. Let's create a new connection from the shell. So we'll launch MySQL, prompt for a password, which connects to the local system. That's currently ABC123. And we'll execute a select current user, which is, has become our standard MO. And as you can see, we're connected as root at localhost. And whenever you connect using the MySQL client, the connection ID is revealed. We are now using connection ID 21. So from the original window, if we rerun show process list, you'll see that connection 21 now exists, whereas the older connection was connection 20. If we execute select, let's say, star from MySQL.user, it runs very quickly. So there may not be enough time for us to witness it in the other window, but we'll try. And let's run process list, and it's now sleeping. But let's say we had a database with a couple hundred gigabytes defined, and the user on connection ID number 20, for example, was overwhelming the resources of the system, or connection 21 in this case. We could simply kill 21, causing 21's process to be killed altogether. Or we could kill the query that's currently being executed by the user but not necessarily the user's connection. Again, to kill a connection, simply kill, and again, it is case insensitive, so let's show you that. Kill 21 kills the connection. Over on the right side, our connection is actually dead. On the left side, we can rerun show process list. There's now a new connection, 22. The reason why there's a new connection is because the MySQL client on the right side persists. So it sets up a new connection. So keep that in mind as well. Now there are some other useful show commands. We mentioned show process list, which allows us to identify connections on the system and who's running long queries, for example. There's also show status. Show status returns the currently running status information of the server. You scroll all the way up to the top and it's alphabetized from A to Z and you'll see key pieces of information such as the amount of clients that were aborted. Aborted clients include users who close sessions incorrectly. So let's say we have a session here open and we simply execute a control shift W which kills the connection. That's an aborted client. Let's rerun show status, scroll all the way to the top and we'll look for our aborted clients. And our aborted client still is at connection count 6, but when a connection is terminated improperly, it's con considered to be an aborted client. If there's an aborted connect, let's say, for example, a user attempts to connect. We execute MySQL, user root, but we don't specify a password. That's an aborted connect. It didn't work. And there are also other pieces of information, such as the amount of bytes received by MySQL and the amount of bytes sent. Generally, you'll find, this is key in troubleshooting performance, you'll find that bytes received is always smaller than bytes sent. And that is because the following applies. Database servers house potentially terabytes of information or maybe more. Database servers are meant to house a lot of information and to be common repositories for multiple users to query, users, applications, or multiple subjects to query. Which means Users will submit SQL queries, which are very small, but the database server will send or return to the user data sets, which are comparatively large. So we may execute, for example, a simple query such as, let's make a connection here, and we'll be prompted for the password. We execute a simple command such as select star from mysql.user, which should be somewhere in our history. If we don't see it, we'll run it. So let's select, and it's because we're not logged in as root, so it's a different history file. So we'll select star from mysql.user, and this returns more information than we executed. The bytes received by the MySQL server includes the word select, 
space star space from space mysql dot user semicolon whereas what was returned is everything that you see here which is much much greater than what was received so bytes received will always be smaller than bytes sent or should always be smaller than bytes sent so spend some time going through the show status information there's some key values there that can help you to determine the current performance of your MySQL server. And there are all sorts of connections that we could spend days looking at. Another key one is the number of connections, which is currently listed as 23. There really aren't 23 people connected. The most recently granted ID, however, reveals as such. Super. Now there are still other show commands. For example, you could show table status. So let's show table status, and we could specify either directly from or we directly such as mysql.user or from mysql and a table name or use a like pattern to match tables that are similar and in this case we missed the from so show table status from and that show table status doesn't actually require the user or the name of the table it simply show table status from the name of the database and what this returns is a lot of information but probably more importantly includes the name of the table as well as a storage engine so if you want to see because different tables can use different storage engines if you want to see the storage engines used or in use by your different tables simply execute a show table status from a given DB and what's returned includes the table name as well as the engine and also the version since multiple versions could be in use and other information such as average row length as well as the data length maximum data length index length how much data is free if auto incrementing is configured create time update time so if you want to know when a given table was created when it was updated and so on so this is another key show command show table status from a given database now let's say for tempdb we execute this command you'll see nothing exists because there are no tables we've yet to define any tables but we will soon enough once we get into defining tables databases and the like additional show commands exist let's just list our show tables here so that we have it in our documentation show table status from table name or from db name that is from db underscore name. There's also the ability to show triggers. MySQL 5.x supports triggers. So in the event that you want to see triggers that are defined, simply execute show triggers. Very important because you can have the database do work for you. So you'd execute a show triggers from db underscore name and optionally you can specify matching using like and in between single quotes specify a pattern. A pattern for example would be show me triggers like email percent you may have a trigger which will send email upon execution of a certain or the changing of a value within a certain table for example let's say a given column goes from 0 to 1 that may cause a trigger which sends email as an example similarly the show table status from DB name accepts like pattern so we'll specify this as pattern pattern usually uses the wildcard percent so that you can match so if you execute show table status as we did from MySQL and you execute like and in between single quotes a pattern such as my s percent there's only one table or user that is there's only one table and that table like user in, in this case will return so if you just want to see information for the user table rather than for all tables then you could return just the user table or perhaps just the DB table or you may have multiple tables with the prefix DB but again from it you'll get the name the engine and that's usually what I consider to be important and optionally you'll find out when the table was created when it was last updated it was created on the 7th it was last updated on the 10th the user table should be updated more frequently because we've been doing a lot of work in the user table so let's rerun that so the user table was created on the 7th but last updated on the 11th and so on and you can always do a select now to see what today's date is and it's the 11th so we've last made changes to the user table on the 11th at 9:55, which was roughly almost an hour ago 
So there are additional show commands. By no means is this a comprehensive look at the show commands. We just wanted to give you a sense for what is possible. Again, an important show command, show process list, will show you who's on the system. And in a busy environment, this becomes more and more important. Now we have three connections. And with kill, you can kill connections. So we should specify kill followed by thread ID, which is revealed using show process list. And you can kill the thread ID. But kill also accepts, for example, query. So we can say kill query. Let's and then the thread ID, which will kill a running query that we consider to be a runaway, and that will free resources on the system. And kill is the standard way of freeing resources. What you'll find are multiple users. This is a, a classroom environment, but you'll find perhaps in a busy environment, 50, 100 users connected to the same backend DBMS but one or two users running queries taking perhaps a couple hours overwhelming the resources of the system. However, if your MySQL DBMS is being used that frequently, perhaps it justifies the need for either clustering and or vertically increasing the size of your box. So at this stage what we're going to do is move on to the different clients. We've spent a bit of time just looking at user management granting pr privileges and just using the terminal interface provided by MySQL for returning information that's key to our MySQL instance. Next we want to look at the key clients that are included, many of which return information that we've returned already using a lot of these show commands, but they're designed to be run from the shell in a batch type fashion. So next we move on to the various MySQL clients, including MySQL.